Hi and welcome to this video in which I'm going to demonstrate the use of a PS3 wireless controller to control Sonic Pi. On the screen here I've got Sonic Pi 3.01 and it is running on my Raspberry Pi and there's also a terminal window open and that's ready to run uh, a little Python script uh, written called PS3 Pi. And I'm just going to start it running now by pressing the enter key and there it goes and it says that this is a um, Python script to allow PS3 controller to give some OSC messages and it can be run either internally on the Sonic Pi which is running on the, the Raspberry Pi here or externally if I just uh, specify the IP address of the um, uh, Sonic Pi it's going to run. And so it runs quite happily on my Mac as well with the interface for the PS3 controller uh, which is a wireless one going into the Pi. Um, there's just a, a wireless dongle that plugs into one of the USB ports and then this allows the program to control uh, Sonic Pi. I'm going to start it up and I'm going to switch to um, full screen. As you can see there, you can see the nice new um, Pro Icon set which is available in Sonic Pi. And as you can see, if you look down at the bottom here and you're able to read that, it says Sonic Pi 3.0.1, uh, which Sam um, has just been working on and uh, I think was released uh, last night. Um, just a few minor changes from uh, 3.0. So I get a switch there back to audio so that I've got that as a sort of panic uh, release here um, because this can get pretty loud. I'm using an IQ audio um, amplifier which is connected to the speakers in my room here so that you'll be able to hear the sound when we start the program running. Um, the program is written in uh, a standard Sonic Pi buffer here it's not that long and uh, it consists mainly of uh, little live loops which are going to um, receive information from OSC messages. Here's one of them here and this is going to wait until it receives an OSC message addressed to uh, slash OSC slash RUD. Uh, that actually stands for right, right, up, down and it refers to the right hand of these two um, uh, potentiometers here um, which have got X, Y axis on them. So that's measuring that input here and that is actually being used, that one, to change the pitch of a note which we'll see a bit later on. You'll notice also on the bottom right of the screen down here there's a window which is called the cues window and that is going to show some of these uh, OSC cues coming in and you'll be able to see them as the program starts running. So I'm going to start Sonic Pi running uh, on the program by simply clicking on the run button here and you can see that it's uh, redefined a few uh, functions, uh, live loops there on the screen and it's waiting for some input from the PS3 controller which I can do by turning on by pressing the central button. You can see there's a blue light there and we are now in business and if I start uh, moving things up and down then you can see that we're getting some information on the screen there can't hear anything yet. Let me first of all demonstrate that on the PS3 controller there are quite a large number of buttons. There's four of them here and there's four um, on these flippers at the back and each one of these is going to play us a particular note and we can choose by using this left hand slider here I can choose the synth which is playing. That's a sine wave synth and if I press one of the buttons here you can hear that. Let's make it a bit louder put the volume up. There's a bit of reverb on. Could perhaps make it a little louder on here. We'll just wind this up a little bit. Let's change the synth and if I move that across to the right you can see that on the screen it will say that the synth is now going to change. So now the tri synth, and that's actually a bit louder. We've actually got a complete scale here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can play chords. So that's the first thing we can do with that. Very nice way to control this. On the left hand uh, slider here, we've already seen that I can, can change the synth here. 
that's now on profit and uh, different sound you can see and we've also got TB303 uh, it's sounding a bit rough there but there's actually a lot of very fast notes playing here they tend to merge into one because of the reverb and we'll see how we can do it better in a minute that's the FM synth uh, that's mod saw and we've got mod FM as well Let's go back to um, perhaps TB303 because one of the other things which I've got on this, which is on the second um, of these two potentiometers, is I've arranged Sonic Pi to play a very long note. It's actually set to last for 200 seconds, although I can cut it off before then. And I started off, I'm going to start it off with the volume turned down to zero, which I've just done there. I started off by pressing this button in, and that starts the note. And when I bring this up again, you can hear that there's a continuous note. I've, got, I've not got no, any input going at the moment. The note's sounding, and if I move the slider, I can choose the pitch of the note going up and down. You can see it displayed on the screen there. And if I go left and right, I can change the cutoff value. So you can actually get some pretty groovy sort of effects with this. Now this note goes on playing continuously, so I can, if I want, mute it by pressing that button. And uh, it takes a bit of time to die away because of the reverb, but I can turn it on again by doing that. Um, or I can, of course, fade out its volume by using this button here. And I can fade it in again. Now, once the long note started, I can't change its synth because that's fixed. It's the note still playing, but I can change the synth here to something else to FM and we've got the buttons here playing in FM and we can actually get quite a nice bass note to accompany that and I put that on there and we can still play this one is dependently this um, slide is just playing it's fixed to a sine wave at the moment. Let's just turn the volume down, for, or turn that long note off um, temporarily, and we can turn the volume up for this, and you can hear. I've set this on a fixed synth at the moment, but you can, uh, with one very simple change in the program, change it so that it will change when you change the synths on it. I thought best not to do so, because if I move this sideways, it's the same control that does actually change the synth. But it doesn't affect this one, but it does affect these. They're now on Mod FM, they're now on Mod Saw, and they're now on FM. And if we turn, bring the note up again, turn it on again, that's still running. And it's still on the same frequency we left it on. I can put it up again. I can give this a quick flip and it'll, I can set it more or less to anything I want. That's 37, that's 80. Let, while we keep that, provided I don't move up and down, I can change the cutoff while the frequency pitch stays the same. You can see that on the screen. And if I, want, I, if I want to have a different note, I can stop it completely. That's not just mooted, that stopped it. It's dying away on the reverb. And I can now change the synth to something else, let's say Prophet. And I can start off a note, this time with the Prophet synth. Um, oh, sorry, I pressed the kill one. Uh, this one on the Prophet synth we do by pressing that button. That started on Prophet now, rather than on TB303. Sounds slightly different. You'll see the effect most if I start it on something like um, sine wave. So we start that off on a sine wave. It's a much purer noise. And of course the cutoff doesn't have quite so much effect on that as it does on the others. So there we have it. PS3 controlling Sonic Pi. All on a Raspberry Pi. It's nothing uh, extra apart from the PS3 and a plug-in dongle. All the rest of the software is easily downloadable onto Sonic Pi. And I hope to write this up for you to try out when you get your hands on Sonic Pi 3. It does require the up-and-coming Raspbian a stretch distro which should be released very shortly uh, I've actually got one I built up myself here um, and uh, then you'll be able to try this out and of course if you don't haven't got uh, that but you've got a Raspberry Pi you can use an earlier distribution and run the PS3 side of it on there and you can connect to a Mac 
via um, the uh, just by changing the address when you run the PS3 program, it'll export this over the network to any other program that's any other machine that's running Sonic Pi 3. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let's just put this out of its misery. We'll cut that off and um, put this down and then I'll stop the video. Thanks very much for watching.